Today we're learning about chicken and rabbit problems. Chicken and rabbit problems are a very common type of math problem as they're a good way to test your problem solving skills. Let's get started with some examples. Example one, a farmer has 80 chickens and rabbits. There are a total of 250 legs. How many chickens are there? How many rabbits are there? So in order to solve this problem, the first method we can do is to make a table. This table needs to have the number of chickens and the number of chicken legs from those number of chickens, the number of rabbits and the number of rabbit legs from those rabbits, and the total number of legs from both the chickens and the rabbits. So the first step in this method is to randomly guess a number of chickens and rabbits. So I'm going to say that there are 40 chickens and 40 rabbits. So if there are 40 chickens, since each chicken has two legs, there will be 80 chicken legs. And since each rabbit has four legs, there will be 160 rabbit legs. So the total number of legs is 240. But since the question says that there are a total of 250 legs between the chickens and the rabbits, we will need 10 more legs. So we know that for every rabbit you add, you're adding two more legs because rabbits have two more legs than chickens. So we need to add five more rabbits in order to add 10 more legs, which means that there will be 35 chickens and 45 rabbits. So let's check if this combination works. So with 35 chickens, we will have 70 chicken legs and for 45 rabbits, we will have 180 rabbit legs. And when we add up the number of chicken legs and the number of rabbit legs, we get 250 legs, which shows that 35 chickens and 45 rabbits is the correct combination of chickens and rabbits. For the second method to solve the chicken and rabbit problem, you have to solve by assuming. And what I mean by that is first you assume that all of the animals are chickens. If they were all chickens, you would have 80 chickens with two legs each, which means there are 160 legs. But the question says that there are 250 legs in total, so you need 90 more legs. And since you know that rabbits have two more legs than chickens, every time you add a rabbit and take away a chicken, you get two more legs. So in order to get 90 more legs, you need to divide 90 by 2 to get 45 rabbits. which means that there are now 45 rabbits and 35 chickens. Example two, there are 36 cars and motorcycles in a parking lot. There are 122 wheels altogether. How many cars are there and how many motorcycles are there? So to solve this problem, we will use method one from the last problem. So first we have to guess a random number of cars and motorcycles, but make sure that the number of cars and motorcycles still add up to 40 to 36. So I'm going to say there are 18 cars and 18 motorcycles. So since each car has four wheels, 18 cars will give 72 wheels. And since each motorcycle has two wheels, 18 motorcycles will give 36 wheels. So the total number of wheels that there are, are 108 wheels. But in the question, they, it says that there are 122 wheels from the cars and the motorcycles. So we need to get 14 more wheels. And since each car has two more wheels than each motorcycle, we will need seven more cars to gain 14 more wheels. So if we add seven more cars to the number of cars, we get 25 cars and we will need to take away seven motorcycles. So that makes 11 motorcycles. So from 25 cars, we get 100 wheels. And from 11 motorcycles, we get 22 wheels. So add them up and you get 122 wheels which shows that the correct combination of cars and motorcycles is 25 cars and 11 motorcycles. Example three, there are 20 questions on a math quiz. 
For each correct answer, five points will be given. Two points will be deducted for a wrong answer. How many questions does Andy answer wrongly if he scores a 72 on a math quiz? And we should assume that he answers all of the questions. So in order to do this problem, we will use method two from the first example. So let's assume that he answered all of the questions correctly. If he did, then he would have 100 points. But Andy only scored a 72, which means that he has 28 points less. And since for every question that he answers wrong, he will lose the five points that he could have gotten if he answered it right and the two points that's deducted for each wrong answer. So that means for a wrong answer, he loses seven points total. And that means to lose 28 points, you need four questions wrong to get a 72, which means that Andy answered four questions wrongly.